Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmer's experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. <laughs> Carol, did you see that geese are used to guard the farm? Okay. This week we are in the dry side of Meru County. I'm Gitonga Anthony, a farmer and a teacher. I'm Betty Kenya or Mrs. Anthony. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a farmer, I'm an administrator. Anthony! Betty! Yes! Hello, hello! Hey. Hello to you! Thank you! Mm. Welcome! How are you? Thank hello. you so much! Hi, Thank you. you! How long have you been farming? I've been farming for the last uh, 10 years. It has been challenging sometimes. Yes. Like now we're having the rains throughout. Yes. It is much challenging to get out the weeds. And uh, the challenges that we have with the chicken is uh, the diseases. Right. Yes. So Shamba Shape Up is finally here. Very yes. much happy. Ah. Yes. 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 If you can kindly give us some time to set up the tent and then we get to work. Thank you. All right. Yes. Well, we'll see you in a bit. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. All right. I feel excited because the most questions that we've been asking each other without a correct answer will be answered today. Most of us keep chicken. Five, ten or even a thousand. Some breeds are very good to keep because they offer good production and thus business sense. The chicken that you have in the farm are 22 improved Kienyeji and 11 are the real Kienyeji. The original Kienyeji normally we produce, but now when they have hatched the chicks, sometimes we get a zero harvest. Betty is passionate about poultry. But she's doing it all wrong. We have called in Rispa Wangare from Kenchik to help her turn this passion into a business. I had a dream of uh, going into business with chicken, but when I kept uh, the improved Kenyeji, a month or two they were all swept by a disease. I used to keep the ducks and the geese in the same structure. Together there? Yes. Yes. Now I can't understand what I did wrong. How keeping both the ducks and the chicken was one of the challenges that caused the diseases. Yes. And then the other bit of diseases, she may not have dis vaccinated her chicks. Ken chick will supply you with chicks that are pre-vaccinated at the hatchery, but now at your farm you need to vaccinate and boost that vaccination and then their immunity will be strong and they'll be able to resist the diseases. Uh -huh. And then from the structure, the structure was not fully made to accommodate chicken yes so the housing should be improved yes do a proper house that is uh, recommended for the chicken we'll now take you into business and we would recommend naked neck broilers naked neck broilers yes why do you recommend them they grow very fast and then they resist diseases they come vaccinated from the hatchery so you only need to boost them once at the 12th day with the newcastle plus ib and then feed them with their recommended feeds. They gain weight very fast and they consume less as compared to the other birds. And then by six weeks, that bird is ready for slaughter with a dressed weight of 1.8 kilos. Wow. Mm. Now, the naked neck broiler mm -hmm. has an open neck and will not suffer from heat stress. When they are mature and maybe we are selling or we are consuming, we leave others for the production. Are these ones coming to the producer or we just exposing and bringing in some more. Six weeks, we clear the whole flock, money in the pocket, we clean down the farm again and start again. Oh. So in a year you can do up to six crops.
we are moving Betty to a better breed that will make business sense for her. Content and with six weeks yes. with money, yes. I post my questions. <laughs> wow, wow. So you are ready to start doing that now? Very ready. I'm ready like yesterday. Yesterday? Yes. Kamau! Kamau has a lot to do to ensure the housing is ready in time for the chicks. But first, he has to move the chicken. With the chicken moved, it's time to bring down the old structure and start a new one. Keep watching to see the new birds arrive. Anthony took us to see a spot nearby that has some fossilized footprints believed to be hundreds of thousands of years old. He also took us to a spot that springs fizzy soda water. Nice. This was the right moment to enjoy the gifts of nature. In order to get good harvest, it is important to start right from the seed. Make sure you get the best seed possible. In these areas that can get very dry or experience low rainfall, sorghum is a very good crop to grow. But don't rush to the market just yet. Let's first learn a bit about the crop. To do this, we have invited Benson Mogambi from Two Scale. How big is this shamba where we are standing? This shamba is half an acre of planted sorghum. Where did you get your seeds? We source them from the nearest angrovets. Ah, which variety is this? This is Seredo. Seredo is a good variety, but not for this place in Ruire. Ruire is in semi-arid region. For you to cater on the aspects of climate change, you need a variety which is highly maturing, and also ensure that your seeds are certified. What was your previous variety that you had planted in this farm? My previous variety was the, the tradition sorghum. It was reddish in color, so that one was not very successful. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? I've observed three things, one being management, overseeding, and spacing. In sorghum, the spacing from row to row should be 75 centimeters. The spacing is strong, quite strong. Mm -hmm. And with my stick, you can see where the mark is, okay. you see the middle row should not be there. Okay. And within the crops, we space it at 20 centimeter and she has done it well. Although there is a problem with overseeding, in sorghum we place two seeds in a hole and these two seeds give us sprouts of about five stalks. And therefore, the maximum number of stalks that you expect is 10, therefore, if you have a crop of more than 10, it means that you planted more seeds. Mm -hmm. In my observation, you can see like this one has about 20 or so. So what see, should she do? Yeah, she'll do what we call thinning, whereby she'll remove the excess. She requires to pluck out the thin ones, the one that are deceased, mm -hmm. the one that has broken like this one that I'm holding, and ensure that the number left is between nine to ten crops mm -hmm. yes it's recommended to do thinning immediately after germination what are the advantages of thinning it will help you to reduce competition from one plant to another when they overlap they compete on sunlight they compete on nutrition also it will ensure that you have achieved the spacing which is required mm -hmm. to why we encourage good spacing is because of management okay what you are supposed to do right now is proper weeding and it's good you note that sorghum we don't have selective chemicals or herbicides that controls weeds. We usually have some alternatives mm -hmm. whereby you can still use the chemicals but ensure that there is no contact any part of sorghum as yeah. you spray. Okay. So that's why spacing was very important in this case mm -hmm. because the sprayer person, mm -hmm. he removes 20 centimeters from one crop and there are another crop. So it's prey at the middle. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the spacing is what is bringing an exactly. issue here. Exactly, yes. All right. And we talked about the variety of the seed. Yes. Which one should she plant? I would advise Betty to use a variety called Gadam. All right. Why, why would Gadam be good for this place? Well, Gadam is a highly maturing variety. And also it, it has a characteristic of drought tolerant. Okay. And also 
it's not easily affected by pests and diseases. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And is it easily available around this area? Yeah, the seeds are easily available. Remember, plant only two certified seeds per hole. Plant them at 20 centimeters hole to hole and 75 centimeters from row to row. Tuskill has partnered with Tegemeo, a business that supplies farmers with certified seeds to grow on contract. Now, what is the right way to grow sorghum? One, ensure there is timely planting. It's good you plant your sorghum before the onset of rain. Due to climatic changes, we advise farmers to do what we call conservation agriculture. There is a very good method. We call it making basins. Measuring 20 centimeters, that is the length. 15 centimeters, the width. And the depth is 15 centimeters. Okay. That little rain that will be harvested will get inside the basin. In that 20 by 15 by 15, your basin now can hold about 0 0.4 liters of water. Mm -hmm. And when you compare the basin with the conventional way, you find that the basin will have more moisture. The basins are spaced at 20 centimeters from one to the next and 75 centimeters from one row to the next. The basins are now ready. Next, put a handful of manure in each basin. Then, put on your gloves and place one bottle top of planting fertilizer into the hole. Make sure to mix the fertilizer with the soil and manure so as to avoid burning of the seed. Then, put two seeds in each basin. When done, cover with some soil. Our farming was like upside down. Planting of the sorghum that you are supposed to use just two seeds. That was something very new about shaping our shamba. Chicken shed shape up is in full speed. So much work to be done before the chicks come in. And the roof is up to protect the chicks from the sun and rain. Next, floor needs to be smooth and good. Coming up after the break. Will the chicken shed be completed in time? How do you turn sorghum farming into a profitable business? And we learn about disposing of chemical containers on the farm. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. In this section, Kamau is running against the weather and time so as to complete the chicken shed. We learn about sorghum farming as a business. But first, how do you dispose of the containers on the farm after spraying? Due to climate challenges, pests and diseases are on the rise. And sometimes we need to spray our crops. Extra care has to be taken before, during and after spraying. The correct disposal of containers is very important on the farm. To educate us more on this, we have invited Benson Gige from AAK Grow. Now, do you use pesticides and herbicides? Yes, I use pesticides and herbicides. After using the herbicides and the pesticides, what do you do with the containers? Basically, I would just dig a deep hole How deep? and bury them. How deep? Around four feet. And then when you get more containers, you make another hole. Sort of a graveyard. Yeah, yeah <laughs> something like that. <laughs> All right. There are those farmers who will bury. There are, as he has also said, there are those who will burn. And there are those who will throw in the pit latrine. So the first reason why you should not throw it in the soil, no matter how deep the hole is, at one point the water will still get to, the, to those containers. And it will wash away the remaining pesticides and take them into the ground. And therefore you will be polluting. So it is not advisable to bury them in the soil. The reason why you should not burn is that uh, the temperatures that are achieved at the farm when you light your fire, they are not high enough to destroy the chemicals. So they'll just evaporate and go into the air, polluting the air. The reason why you should not throw it in the latrine is that the latrine also has some small organisms that uh, make the toilet not to smell a lot and also not to fill up very fast. So if you throw the products inside there, 
then it means that you are also harming those organisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what are the guidelines? Anytime you intend to use any herbicide or pesticide, the first thing you should do is to read the label because it gives you the instructions on how you can use the product in a safe and efficient manner. Anthony, do you do that? Yes, I normally read the instructions. Uh, so there is a process that is supposed to be followed when it comes to the disposal of uh, empty pesticide containers. At the point of use, when the pesticide or the herbicide is over, that is the point where you're supposed to undertake what is known as a, a triple rinsing procedure. Triple rinsing? Yes. I've never heard of that. It is rinsing the empty pesticide container three times so that you can remove any remains that are within the container and place them in the spray tank. Yes. So that still saves on the farmer. It saves the farmer. Mm. And if you do it later, you won't have anywhere to throw that water. You will end up uh, throwing it away in the environment, somewhere on the shamba. You'll be doing more harm. More harm, yes. Remember, triple rinsing ensures you use all the product. Pour out the rinse water into your sprayer. After the triple rinsing, mm -hmm. what was the next step? When you come back after you are done with the spraying, you'll take the container and remove the label the pesticide label and this is done so that no one else can come and pick the container and use it to make a counterfeit product. After you have removed the label, the next step is to puncture the bottle. If anyone else would like to use it in, at, at home to put milk, to put tea leaves, they will not be able to do that once you have punctured the, the containers. And then after you have punctured it, the next step is to flatten it. You do not want to carry a whole gunia that has very little weight, so you flatten them so that you can carry more and uh, deliver them to the nearest collection centre. Oh, so there's a collection centre? As AAK grow, we also provide facilities or collection centres where the farmers can come and bring their empty containers for proper disposal as recommended by the manufacturers and the government. Where do I keep them before delivering them to the collection centre? After you have flattened the containers, you can place them in a sack. At the farm, you should be able to keep them away from uh, children and uh, away from other people in your homestead. And ideally, it should be in a store where you, you can lock. You are the one with access to the key. The materials, some of them are made of glass, others are made of plastic. Mm -hmm. The procedure, is it the same or what? For the glass and the, the plastic containers, the procedure of triple rinsing is the same. How does it puncture the glass? Uh, the glass will be delivered as is. For the sachets, you ensure that each of the last powder has been removed, and then you can crumple it and place it in your sack. When you deliver to the collection centre, the sorting will be done at, at that particular point. To find your nearest disposal centre, get in touch with iShamba. What do you think of our expert's advice? Well done. Mm. Yes, mm. that one is quite good. We are going to improve on that so that uh, we can go with the standards. Mm. You go with the standards? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Today, we are going to have a look at Kenya's weather seasonal forecast for the March to May long rains. We expect to have more rains this year than we have in the last seasons across most of the country. Let's have a look at when the rains will begin and end in different parts of the country. As shown on the map, in the northwest and northeastern regions, rains will start between the fourth week of March and the first week of April. The rains will stop here in the second to third week of April. This includes Trukana and Samburu, Marsabit, Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo and Garissa. Southeastern counties will continue to get rain that started in February. There will be a short dry spell in March, but rains will pick up again at the end of March all the way through to mid-May. This includes Kitui, Makueni, Machakos, Taita Taveta and Kajado. The north coast and the south coast will also see rains begin at the end of March or beginning of April and it will keep pouring here until June. This covers the counties of Lamu, Malindi, parts of Tana River, Kilifi, as well as Mombasa, Kwale, and parts of Taita Taveta. Central Kenya counties will continue to get rains that started in February. There will be a short dry spell in March, but rains will pick up again at the end of March all the way through to the third week of May. This covers the counties of Nyandarwa, Nyeri, Kirinyaga, Moranga, Meru, Tarakanithi, Embu, as well as Nairobi and Kiambu. In the Rift Valley, Western and Nyanza regions, rainfall that started in February as well will continue to June. This cuts across West Pokot, Wasin Gishu, Nandi, Kericho, Tubusia, Kakamega, Bungoma, Vihiga, Siaya, Homa Bay, Nyamira, Kisi, and Migori. If you would like a very detailed weather forecast for your area, get in touch with Aishamba. Call 0711 082 606 
I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shepa Farming News for Kenya. Time is running out and we need to finish the chicken shed before the chicks get here. The dough is done and the chicks will be safe from predators. But we now need the brooder to be finished. So, you've grown your sorghum from the best seed. What next? How do you ensure that your sorghum makes you money? We are still on the farm with Benson Mugambi from Two Scale, who is going to educate Betty on the advantages of having ready market for your sorghum. Why did you plant sorghum? Uh, for consumption and uh, commercial purposes. Let's talk about the commercial value. The surplus uh, commercial purposes means you go looking for the market from the local stores. Mm. At times you may not find it. At times you find it. Did it bring you the amount of money you needed? Not really. The market for sorghum is huge. But now my advice is, before you even think of planting sorghum, first think of market. We have an aggregator and a trader. Tegeme is an hoof taker, and usually he contracts farmers to farm sorghum and palmillet. It's located in semi-arid regions of the Rakanivi. We can link you up with Tegemeo. So Tegemeo as a company has some prevalences on varieties. So before even you start planting your sorghum, you first sign a contract with him on market because he usually gives out contracts. On the side of sorghum, he has variety called Sila, Gadam, which are suitable in this area. The varieties has very big market. Then on the side of palmillet, he has a very big market on biofortified palmillet. Tegemeo is a company that provides farmers with seeds and contracts them to then buy the produce from them on contract. What if the rain fails and maybe we have taken the seeds? In regard to crop failure, we usually advise farmers to ensure that their crops are insured. Because Tegemeo will sell seeds on you, but you are the one as a farmer who is supposed now to go a step ahead and purchase an, an insurance product for that crop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Since we are in a dry area, Gadam is good as it needs little rainfall and matures fast. Is this partner of ours ready to journey with us to take care of the crops, to inform us uh, about the herbicides, insecticides? You will get simply because Tegemeo has some other extension officer on the ground. So these extension officers usually do what we call crop follow-ups, give advice on agronomy, post-harvest losses. Does Tegemeo give loans to farmers? Right now it doesn't give loans but we have other alternatives. The signed agreement can be used as a collateral. We have been working with some financial institutions, like circles. So these circles, with that agreement, it's a kind of security. Mm -hmm. So they can give you input loan, and then you pay after a period of six months. Do you have any minimum acreage, or you can start with any? Usually we encourage farmers. You start from an acre, simply because of what we call resources maximization. You'll find that mm -hmm. the insurance that you insure your crops, that insurance for a quarter an acre is the same amount with the one for one acre. But for Toigemeo, it doesn't have limit whether you have a quarter, whether you have a half, you'll do it. But as an expert now, I advise you do at least a, a bigger land for you now to, to get the benefits. How much uh, am I going to fetch per kg, for instance? For the Gemeo company, it usually offers a very competitive prices, but our advice to the farmers is, first of all, know your cost, production cost, mm -hmm. in an acre, so that whatever price the contract offers you, you should be knowing if you are making a profit or a, or a loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe just to add on that, you could contact our Shamba Shape Up I Shamba Call Center. Yeah. We are the always tell you how much uh, your sorghum is costing in your particular area. Then you compare it vis-a-vis -vis what yeah. Tegemeo is, is giving. That way you're able to gauge and get the best. Oh. All right? Okay. Okay. Now, armed with all that knowledge, I'm sure you are now even more confident when you're planting your sorghum because you know where you're going to sell it. Exactly. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah, Thank you, Freddy. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, no! 
The chicks are here. Kamau is not done. We need to rush. First, the curtains need to go up. Then, the food bath. The wood shavings or litter is also very important. You can't forget the antiseptic spray to get the place clean and ready. Ensure you have a jiko for heat and curtains to keep the heat in. Vitamins in the water. We should be placed before the chicks come in. The feed as well. Can't forget that. We made it. The chicks are here. Just in time. So, Rispa, what's the next step now that the chicks are here? You need to heat the brooder for the first 21 days. Maintain good temperatures. For the first week, we're going to maintain 33 degrees Celsius. But what is more important is their behavior. When it's cold, they get together, they huddle together, and then they don't feed. When it's very hot, they go far away from the source of heat, and then they pant a lot so that they can lose that heat. With the reduction of heat, you lower the curtains to allow cool air to come into the brooder so that the temperatures go lower a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then when it's cold, you close up the curtains. Remember, give starter crumbs for the first 21 days and finisher for the last 21 days. Uh, we're going to feed the birds only during the daylight. Now, for feeding, you'll feed throughout the day and night, so you need lighting during at night to okay. make it 24 hours. Okay. And then for the brooder, we're going to be turning that litter mm -hmm. so that the litter will not go wet. Mm -hmm. And then the spacing, this will be enough for the first 10 days. Mm -hmm. As the bird grows, we increase the space. By 21 days, it's full house, one square foot per bird. Mm -hmm. wow. This one now you have the king chick naked neck broiler. What does a farmer expect? Now, the bridge is fast growing. By six weeks, the bird is ready for slaughter. And uh, with good management, with the right feeding, you expect the bird to get up to 1.8 kg dressed weight. No other question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Better if more information is needed, visit our website and also our WhatsApp platform. Oh, okay. Yes. Don't forget the vaccine. Visit the Kenchik website for more information. We've been here with you, Anthony and Betty, and we are happy. Now, with the Shamba Sheep Pub, uh, the future of my farm is quite bright because uh, without the knowledge, I can, I can reach him far. I'm very happy. Yes. And excited. Mm -hmm. When you come next time, you're going to find wonders because what has remained with us, it is implementation. So now we have to leave to go see other farmers yeah. and we we'll see you in the next Shamba Shepherd.